Welcome back for the Mobile Game Fanatics. My time here back with another episode of my NBA 2K18. And first of all, I would like to start off by thanking all of you who have been very positive in your comments about my last video with regards to tips for Rivals Clash. Now, I'm not a particularly selfish person, so I'm quite happy to try and help people where I can. And I'll just click on Rivals Clash for the moment. But for those of you who are maybe struggling, I do hope you have a better chance of winning your games now. And you are actually able to get the rewards you want in the event. Now I appreciate there are thousands and thousands of people that play the game. And I do not have thousands and thousands of people that watch my videos. So those of you that do, if I can help you or find anything that helps me, I will pass that information on to you guys and hopefully together we can all do better in the game that is my aim anyway but as we're waiting on the network the Philadelphia 76ers and Los Angeles Lakers this is the current situation I'm ranked 284th and I'm pretty happy with that to be honest with you because I said I had a busy day when I stopped playing for my first stint on the Friday and I'm like, what my kind of proper stint I was playing on and off but where I was sat there for a number of hours playing. I ended up on 3,200 points and I was ranked 13th at the time. Now, I kind of knew that I was going to struggle to remain in the top 100 without being able to play for the majority of Saturday and quite a lot of this Sunday. So I kind of gave up on that. Now, 7,800 is a lot of points. It would require hot streaks. That's kind of what I'm going to go into in a moment. The hot streak side of Rivals Clash and are they worth it? Now, 3,815 would keep me in the top 400 at the moment and I'm on 4,172. Now, the good news is, although people do, oops, didn't come back to it, although people do tend to grind more towards the end of an event, and you will notice that it is important to get a good start, but it's also important to end well. The middle part is kind of if you're going to have a relax, is the best place because some people by then will give up already and some people will start to play towards the middle and end which you've already played at the beginning you've given yourself an, an indication of how much you'll have to play towards the end to get the rewards you want so if we just have a look at leaderboard very quickly to stay within the top 800 and get the event card I've got a 1400 point gap at the moment does that mean if I stop playing I'd get the card? Um, Eleven hours to go. I think it'll be close. I think you're looking at around. I'm gonna put it out there now. Probably, probably five thousand should get you it, and probably four thousand five hundred is gonna be a benchmark. I'm gonna say you get a lot of people play through towards you and try and get close. If you get four thousand five hundred, I think you will be safe. Uh, but five k should do it. So I'm gonna kind of play through to there. I will maybe try and get the rank, the tier two because of the rewards. Okay, I'm gonna miss out on the double event card. I can't get that in this, and it's gonna be very hard a lot of weekends because I do work, have a job, I'm not in college people, so I, unfortunately, I don't have as much spare time on the weekend to play these events. Um, so this will be where I aim for. I will definitely make sure I get this throughout the day, but just keeping an eye on where I am and playing games here and there. And this is what I'll go for. Go for that Brook Lopez card. It's not essential, to be honest with you, and this is what I'm going to talk about. So, is it worth buying hot streaks in Rivals Clash? Now, it all depends what you're going for. You have to buy hot streaks if you're going to rank 1 to 100, okay? That is imperative. As you can see at the moment, 7,800. Now, let's just say every single, let's just say every single game was played under hot streak and every single game was won. So, if you're going to be ranked 100, you would have to have played 780 games all at plus 10 okay that is the the basic math for it so 780 games up to now to be ranked 100 and to be able to get those cards if they're all plus 10 and you want them all so as you wait on network again before i show you this that's going to cost you 2600 credits for 156 hot streaks so you need to do here we go just to show you okay so 2600 credits We'll get you 156 hot streaks so basically not not quite but almost you need to buy five lots of these packs to have that 156 so if you simplify it to 150 times that by five that's going to give you 750 and six lots of five oh, 780 there you go it is actually bang on so 
you have to then spend what's that 13,000 credits for those hot streaks and what do you get for 13,000 credits well you do get currently obviously there is still more time to go you do get yourself back to rewards two event elite pros and an elite single so from a financial perspective if you were going to say am I going to dump 13,000 credits into packs or 13,000 credits into the event you would be better to stick the 13,000 credits into the event you can be guaranteed the two best cards in the game currently or you know two of the best cards in the game and an elite foil card to um, accommodate them so yes it does look worth it to do this however with another 11 hours to go it's not going to stick at 13,000 it's going to be a lot closer probably to the 18,000 mark and then you can probably get away with playing plus fives to the end that's what you're kind of going for and then moving down into this tier and this tier um, obviously the amount you have to spend is reduced you can probably get away in 401 to 800 buying one load of the the packs 1,560 points worth and then grind the rest on plus fives so is it worth it well in comparison to the packs yes but in comparison to how much it actually cost to get those credits and into the game that is your decision to make but if you're going to spend money over the weekend then yes it would be worthwhile doing it in the event compared to doing it on packs because at least you can try and guarantee yourself something as long as you make sure you get the rewards you're going for the slight problem at the moment is hot streaks hot streaks oops hot streaks should drop okay and there's a bug there's something going on because not a single hot streak has dropped during this event for me okay find hot streaks on the draft board use hot streaks to double the possible personal points in your next game now i've had absolutely none drop when i've had hot streaks running from purchasing them i've had absolutely none drop now that i've been playing just on plus fives let me know if any of you have had a hot streak i'm pretty sure this is broken at the moment i'm pretty sure it doesn't work so that is making it harder to keep up with people who are solely solely using packs okay so for those of you who maybe are trying to get the top cards with, by spending lots of time grinding but trying to not buy the credits you're going to struggle because you've got no chance of yes there is obviously as much chance say of somebody else picking up a hot streak off the board as you picking up a hot streak at random but if they are guaranteed to have plus 10 every single game and you are guaranteed to only have plus 5 every game you've obviously got to play double the amount of games to catch up with them now with a bit of luck and stuff you may end up pulling more hot streaks in them which would have helped you rein it in a little bit it might not make a lot of difference over the course of the event but obviously it would help especially then when you're looking at people around your around you in the leaderboard so if you're like flirting between two tiers and some people have stopped playing but they're two three hundred points ahead of you if you're pulling hot streaks you will catch them up quicker if you're not pulling hot streaks you know you've got a guaranteed for example 100 games to catch them up or 60 games to catch them up but with the hot streaks pulling you might be reduced to 50 games so it's not just all the other people playing it's also the people who have stopped playing that and it will affect you again so that's something i do need to address something that needs to be brought up and hopefully cat daddy can get fixed for the next rc because otherwise they just have to remove the whole point of hot streaks dropping on the board and then just say right well, you either buy them or you don't simple don't have them in the help bit about the event telling you that hot streaks will drop now the last thing we're going to come to for this is away from rivals clash but is related to rivals clash if you don't really play the event if you just play it a bit casually and you're not too worried about the rewards you're just going to try and get an easy epic card or, or epic prime card or something like that from it you've got no intention to grind it's a perfect time to get onto your head to head okay head to head during rivals clash is complete and utter gold dust for people who don't want to get involved in the event because there will be loads and loads of people like myself who are no longer playing the event because they are busy playing Marvel's Clash so we're in the new new leaderboard uh, it's been reset and as you can see here some people are playing like myself not even played a single game yet and it will probably maintain like this for the majority of the event 
a great chance for you to catch up or to get into a tier, especially if you're close to the end of a tier or you're about to get relegated out of tier. It's a very, very good chance to play games. There'll be a lot of people focused on the event and you can then move yourself up into the next tier and then hope you maintain that or maintain your current standing in the tier you're in. So just a little tip, obviously, if you can do both Rivals Clash, come back and do a couple of games and go back to Rivals Clash, that would be the perfect scenario. Sub, um, forfeiting a couple of Rival Clash games to keep your head-to-head -head up to date. That's if you're not going for, say, the top 100. If you're going for just top 800, you can definitely do both of those without too much trouble. But I've been my time anyway, guys. I'm going to shoot off now. As I said, I will try and get that Lonzo card, and I will try and show you it pro as long as I can remain in the top 800, which should be achievable. Ideally, I'll go for that top 400, but I'm not going to be spending any more credits at the moment because... I don't think it's, I don't want to spend extra money to get myself an elite foil. Not that an elite foil isn't worth it, but it's not a pro or anything for me at the moment. And there's no guarantee it would ever become a pro. So I'm just going to try and make sure I, I at least get the pro, which I can achieve. And that is that Lonzo card. So good luck. Let me know your Rivals Clash is going. Thank you again for those who enjoyed the tips in the last video. I will try and bring out some more in the next Rivals Clash. And obviously with RC when it comes out if that is the next event but until then i've been my time take care see you all soon